Just look at the map. It tells the story. All the fires we're tracking all across right here in Northern California. Hello, everyone. This is a special edition of ABC 10 News on ABC 10 Plus. I'm Chris Thomas. I'm Laura Painter. Thank you for being here. Now, keep in mind, firefighters are battling a grass fire in Sacramento County as we speak. It's burning near Mather Airport, not far from where another large fire burned more than 900 acres less than 24 hours ago. ABC 10's Brandon Riddiman is there right now. And Brandon, I know you've been watching crews as they attack this fire. What's the concern here? Uh, several homes uh, just downwind, right? Yeah, we're, uh, we're in a fairly uninhabited area here, not far from Mather Lake. And uh, the, the fire has been contained mostly to grass. You can actually see some of the kinds of fuel that's burning just here right where I'm at. And there's the wind. So you put those two things together and fire will move at basically the speed that the air is moving. And that's what you can see happening right behind me. Uh, Wes is giving you a look right now at the flank of the fire where we have several fire crews just sort of trying to attack and keep the front of the fire from moving forward. Um, but I, I have to tell you the part that they're working on in your frame right now is not as far as the fire progressed. And as we pan to the right here, you can see some of the homes that they're trying to protect. And you can kind of get a sense because the smoke is clearing of how much got blackened all the way up to Sunrise Boulevard over here. And uh, we do still have some hot spots towards the head. In fact, if you go even further to the right, Wes, you can see uh, the very, the very far right side of your screen to keep going. There's a, there's a spot fire that's way off, uh, kind of over by these high tension power lines. So this is the thing, the fire moves really quickly in conditions like this where you have dry, flashy fuels uh, that, that go so easily uh, and then you have a, just a bit of wind behind it will push it. What we've been having is you know increasing gusts headed into this afternoon that have really carried this fire quite some distance. We have seen Metro Fire's helicopter out here with the snorkel doing dips and doing some water drops on the fire. Uh, I'm not sure if the wind speed is gonna allow that to continue uh, for a lot longer, but actually we, we've got them up in the sky right here. Wes, if you wanna take a look. Um, this is the, the unit that I was talking about. So we've had one helicopter working out here as well as dozers and, and dozers don't get a lot of credit sometimes, but, uh, and I am looking for him for you, Wes, but he's a little out of sight right now. The bulldozer is a really important tool because it basically just takes the fuel uh, down to bare mineral dirt and it gives them a way to attack the edge of the fire, which is what they've been doing. They try to pinch off the head of it by coming up the side. And that's really what you're seeing uh, these fire crews do is they're working the flank. So you never want to be right in the direction the fire is going where the flames are rushing at you. But if you can get alongside of it, you can try to steer the fire. It's really the best that firefighters can hope for. And they've done a pretty magnificent job so far here. Um, as long as these winds uh, don't kick one of these hot spots, you know, way up on the head of the fire uh, going again uh, and in the direction of homes, it's actually looking uh, pretty hopeful to have at least some containment on this fire. Um, that's the thing about grass fires is sometimes they, they pop up really fast, they move really fast, but uh, they can also be put out really fast because these are not, you know, a, a, a big forested area is not burning here. We don't have trees that'll burn for hours or even days uh, after the fire has gone. So uh, if they can get the ground cool out here, we might be able to put this one to rest, but it is too early uh, to say that this fire is not a threat to homes at this point because uh, just because of the sheer wind force that we have, the dry fuels that we have, uh, and the fact that I'm looking at active fire, uh, both up at the head where we've had spots and here on the flank where they're trying to do some mop up where the fire's already burned uh, to keep it from creeping over in our direction. Uh, so yeah, right now, uh, uh, looking at a, a pretty intensive effort uh, and I, I, certainly the acreage is gonna go up because this fire has moved so quickly. Um, yeah, I think the last we heard was a few hundred acres. It, it might go up a few hundred more. But uh, at this juncture, we don't see any structures that have been lost. If there are, they'd be small kind of outbuilding or maybe abandoned structures uh, out in the vicinity of, of, of Mather Lake and the, some of the abandoned military sites that are out there by Mather Field. But uh, yeah, right now it's just a, a hot, hot day for the firefighters on, but it could be hotter. I'm, I'm grateful this isn't happening in the 102 degree weather that we had last week, guys. Yeah, absolutely right, Brandon. Very difficult conditions for fire crews out there. We see them out there trying to battle this fire, the Douglas fire burning near Mather Airport. And we can hear the wind blowing very powerfully through your microphone. We see that powerful wind as well, moving that smoke very quickly through the area as the fire Fire crews work to contain this fire, keep it out of the danger of any homes and roads in that area. Brendan, please be safe. Keep us updated. 
Okay, we'll check back in with Brandon shortly. I do want to show you a fire burning in Calaveras County, another major fire that's putting off a lot of smoke. This is on Arrow Road near Hunt Road in the community of Copperopolis. It's now at 932 acres. And keep in mind, just minutes ago, 30 minutes ago or so, it was at 250 acres. It shows you just how much it's burning and how fast it's moving. There is now an evacuation order in the area of Rock Creek Road and Highway 4, as well as Hunts Valley Road. Highway 4 to West Town Square is also evacuated. So do expect traffic delays and Highway 4, because of these evacuations, will be impacted with those road closures. Firefighters and the Sheriff's Department are doing every single thing they can to try and keep people safe. Please heed the evacuation orders. We do have more information on our website, abc10.com, and we'll be following this throughout the evening with crews there on the ground. And we are tracking another fire as well. This new video just into our newsroom of a fire burning in Manteca right now. This is near McKinley and Bronson. While at this time, we are told there are no current evacuations. There are buildings threatened, we're told. Manteca police say that they are putting people in the area on standby just in case this fire danger grows and increases and they might have to leave their homes in a moment's notice so they are preparing for that and residents are returning home to their homes after a wildfire tore through 900 acres in Sacramento County near Mather. Yeah, it was called the Excelsior Fire and it did make for a scary Father's Day weekend. Mm, all evacuation orders and road closures were thankfully lifted today. The fire though it did destroy outbuildings and cars, but thankfully fire crews say homes were saved. Amongst the blackened land left behind the fire, the Greater Sacramento Muslim Cemetery was spared. I could not believe it, that all the areas surrounding the cemetery is completely burnt, even if you go to the back, but this cemetery is still intact. So that's really wonderful. The strong winds and dry conditions fueled the fire spread. Fire crews worked throughout the night to build containment lines in threatened areas. Fires 100% contained. Sacramento Metro Fire and the Office of Emergency Services will evaluate the damages. And take a look. I want to show you a fire burning in Calusa County near Sites Ladoga Road and Stone Coral Avenue in Calusa. It's now more than 600 acres. It's a fast moving fire and keep in mind it started just a few hours ago we we've been showing you how these fires just balloon in size in just a short period of time that is so true and not just here in northern california but also in southern california as well you are looking at the post fire it's burned at least nearly 16,000 acres this fire is burning in the grapevine which is about 65 miles north of downtown la it's only 8% contained at last check, though it likely might have grown. Strong winds are making it very challenging for the firefight. At least 1,200 people had to be evacuated. The cause of the fire is under investigation, but local crews from, the, uh, from our area actually are coming down there to help as well. So let's bring in Brendan now. I mean, this really is an indicator of how powerful this fire season already is. Yeah, I, we were kind of talking about this too, about how we had all this rain for two winters in a row, uh, and now we have a lot of uh, new vegetation, a lot of new grass uh, in the valley. And this was a concern that we get some of these hot, dry, windy days and it all kind of catches on fire. And that's what we have seen several times already this summer uh, and are continuing to see. And it, uh, technically, it's not even officially summer yet. The first day of summer, not until Thursday of this week. But let's get back to the fire weather. Uh, the current wind gusts across the metro area, 28 Mather, 30 Sacramento Executive, 31 at the International Airport. 32 McClellan uh, in the 20s in Vacaville uh, and out towards Travis. So this northwesterly wind, again, gusting at 30 miles per hour, is what is driving these fires uh, this afternoon. Even as you work your way into the San Joaquin Valley and the Bay Area, still seeing these northwesterly winds uh, upwards of 30 miles per hour. Here's some of the alert California wildfire cameras on two of the fires, two of the big ones uh, that we are tracking. The Sites Fire, 1,300 acres now. Uh, we have a couple cameras, one in Calusa County, one in Glynn County. Look at this plume of smoke uh, right now. This is a very active fire. There's a lot of aircraft on it. It is in a fairly rural area, but because of that northwesterly wind, it's going to be pushing this smoke plume uh, right down the valley. So it wouldn't surprise me at all if the majority of us end up smelling smoke by the time we get to sunset tonight as that northwesterly wind continues. And as you can see, it is pumping uh, that smoke 
uh, down into the valley. Now, this is the other one a little closer to the metro area, the Arrow Fire, uh, 932 acres. That camera, uh, the Upper Bear camera in Calaveras, this one, the Fowler Peak camera in Calaveras. This is an extremely active fire moving at a dangerous rate of spread right now. Looks like it is crossing Highway 4, uh, and there are plenty of evacuation orders and warnings uh, in place in the Copperopolis area of Calaveras County. So if you are downwind of this fire, especially the Arrow Fire, we're very concerned about this one right now. There are a lot of aircraft and resources uh, on the fire, uh, but it is spreading again at a dangerous rate. Now, if we look at live radar, this is about where the fire is, or at least where it started. This is not rain. This is not a cloud. This is that smoke plume uh, from the fire, and you can see just how uh, active this fire is and you can also notice how quickly that smoke plume is moving because of that wind out of the northwest there so if you are close to the arrow fire it is time to pack that go back if you haven't already if you have time to do this now is absolutely the time to pack that backpack that suitcase whatever it is one person uh per person in your household one bag so if there's five people in your houses in your house your apartment whatever it is there should be five bags at least one bag uh, for your pets as well Make sure you bring their food and a little toy for them. Uh, papers, and these are your, gonna be your important papers. Uh, we're talking insurance documents, birth certificates, uh, marriage licenses or certificates or social security uh, cards. Uh, I mean, anything of any importance, passports, make sure you have all those in that bag with you. Anything that would be difficult to replace or anything that you may need, if unfortunately you have to start over, make sure it ends up in that bag. That's all the paperwork you might need. Uh, the prescriptions is another important one. This could be prescription medication, could be medical devices, whatever it is. If it's important to you, needs to end up in that go bag as well. And then last one, five photos. Uh, not just photos, could be anything of kind of some sentimental value, trick tra uh, uh, trinkets, uh, knickknacks, anything uh, along those lines. If it's small, you can put it in the bag, not going to hinder your ability uh, to evacuate. Uh, put that in the bag as well. These are the five P's. If you, Again, if you are near the Copperopolis area in Calaveras County, near that arrow fire, make sure that bag is packed. If it's not already, you may need it tonight. Uh, current winds across the valley out of the northwest, like we talked about, gusting 20 uh, gusting upwards of 25 miles per hour. These are your sustained winds. These are the wind gusts upwards of 25, even some 35 mile per hour winds down near Stockton, Modesto. Jackson's thing about 25 mile per hour wind gusts. This is what's driving those fires. It is all wind driven right now because it is so dry and so very windy. Uh, current relative humidity values are in the low teens across much of the valley. 6% uh, in Fairfield. These gray colors that you see on the map, uh, that's indicative of very low single digit relative humidity values. Uh, so again, that combined with the wind is really making for a very dangerous fire day. The one uh, kind of saving grace, if you will, the one silver lining, you heard Brandon Ritterman say it uh, out there at Mather just a few minutes ago. It's the fact that we're not in the hundreds, right? We sometimes get these fire weather days and it's 95, 100, 105 out. Today we are in those 80s across the region, which is actually several degrees below average. So that is kind of the one piece of good news that we can take away from all this. But there's a lot still to come. So the red flag warning, the entirety of the California Central Valley from Redding all the way down into L.A. County. And we're going to be dealing with these red flag conditions for at least 12 more hours all the way through the night as these northerly wind gusts continue at 25 to 35 miles per hour. There will not be any overnight relief because we will not see the Delta breeze tonight. So. There will not be a rebound in that relative humidity. We're going to stay in the single digit. Uh, there will not be any uh, weakening uh, of the north winds because they, again, are just going to continue 25 to 35 miles per hour all night long. So as we look at the future wind gusts here, again, out of the northwest through the evening, this is 10 o'clock. We would typically see a westerly or a southwesterly wind in the valley. That is not happening. It is all north winds all the way through the evening and overnight period. This is Tuesday morning. This is 5 a.m. on Tuesday, and we're still looking at winds of upwards 20 miles per hour in the valley, uh, stronger in the Sacramento Valley, out of the northwest. These are dry winds, strong winds still out of the north by the time we wake up on Tuesday morning. They will slowly taper off as we go through the daytime on Tuesday, and then we will get that Delta breeze Tuesday afternoon, and that will kind of bring the curtain down on this period of elevated to critical fire weather. But that red flag warning continues until 8 a.m. on Tuesday because we're going to continue to have low relative humidity values 
all the way through the overnight period. This is 10 p.m. Uh, tonight. You would typically expect to see these values in the 40 to 50 percent range by the time we get to about 10 or 11 o'clock at night because of that delta breeze. But because we don't have a delta breeze, we don't get that overnight rebound in relative humidity values. In fact, even tomorrow, we'll still be looking at the low single digits, but the north winds kind of slacken as the day goes on Tuesday, which is why that red flag warning expires early. And then as the Delta breeze returns on Tuesday night into Wednesday, we see that relative humidity actually come back up again. So tomorrow we'll have some lower fire danger because the north winds finally come to an end. Temperature is quite a bit warmer, though. We'll be in those low 90s compared to those low to mid 80s that we saw uh, today in the valley. So over the next 10 days, uh, a couple holidays coming up. We got Juneteenth on Wednesday and then we have the first day of summer on Thursday. Temperature is going to be in those 90s. And then as we head in towards the weekend, temperatures warm up even further. We're going to be in those triple digits or at least very close to them, both Saturday and Sunday and the start of next week. Chris okay, Brendan, thank you so very much. Let's track some of the other big stories we're following today. Listen to that. A live pipe bomb was safely disarmed at a recycling center in North Highlands. It all happened on Watt Avenue just after 11 a.m. at Republic Services Recycling Center. Now, thankfully, no one was hurt. Sacramento County deputies say the device was a commercial firework modified to be a pipe bomb. There are no suspects at this time. A cigarette caused a garage fire in Fair Oaks. Sacramento Metro Fire says it was improperly disposed of, and it led to what you see right here on your screen, massive flames coming from this home. This was at last night around 1045. At one point, power lines were sparking, so SMUD had to come and de-energize the home. Thankfully, the fire was eventually knocked down, but as you see, there is extensive damage left behind. All three people inside were able to make it out safely. Red Cross is helping them find a place to stay. A fire destroyed a historic hotel in Marysville over the weekend. It happened Saturday night. The hotel is located on E Street between 4th and 5th Street. The building, as you can see there, is now a total loss. Now keep in mind, roads are still closed, but the good news is no one was hurt. The cause of that fire is now under investigation. Okay, let's get back out to ABC 10's Brandon Ritterman. He is at Mather, giving us updates on the Douglas fire there right now. And we see that wind still blowing strong. And the challenge, of course, Brandon, uh, is that we're uh, tracking these very high winds throughout the evening for at least 12 more hours. I know you've covered several of these fires. What would be your concern right now watching uh, as this all unfolds? The concern right now is exactly what you mentioned, which is the wind speed and what it's doing to these fuels. Earlier in the show, we showed you that they were they were kind of mopping up the flank, and you can see uh, they've done a pretty good job of that. Uh, but the the head of this fire, unfortunately, has kicked back up. It started over by Mather Lake, but now you can see uh, that it's spreading. It's moving out in the direction of uh, Douglas and Sunrise right now. And uh, while the crews have been able to kind of cool down some of the fire that was burning earlier, this is what happens. You get these dry, flashy fuels, all that dead grass that you can see in your frame right now. That's in, that is what's burning. And when fire hits that kind of dry, flashy fuel, the fire will move just about as fast as the wind moves. And all it takes really is for one ember to get carried in that plume of smoke, land in the grass a little bit further down, and now the fire is leapfrogging. So uh, the, the concern right now is to make sure that this fire doesn't jump any of the major arteries here, Douglas, Sunrise, uh, and, and get into a place that is more developed. Right now, we're very fortunate that this fire has been burning just in grass, shrubs, in a, in a, a ban largely abandoned area in that park near uh, uh, Mather Lake, and then the abandoned military uh, infrastructure that's out here by Mather Field, uh, just a little bit to the east. Right now, um, though, as you can see, the fire gets a little more intense uh, when you get these spots and it, it finds a new area of fuel that can burn and you're getting a little bit of black smoke there. I don't believe that that's a structure. It's very difficult to tell from this distance, uh, but certainly there's a, a thick patch of, you know, a little bit uh, wetter vegetation. It's getting hot enough from that uh, grass burning that it's lighting, you know, some of the greener vegetation on fire. So sometimes you'll get black smoke from that. Uh, it's not always structures that put up black smoke, but nonetheless, the fact that, that you are hitting a, p a bigger patch of fuel like that, whenever that happens, that means that more embers are being thrown up into the air by those thicker fuels. And when you get those embers going airborne in wind like this, the wind shear will take those embers and drop them for 
perhaps a quarter mile downwind. And, and now all of a sudden we're worried about this thing spotting over major roads. So even though there's been a lot of progress in the time that we've been here, and there were times where the head of this fire looked pretty tame, right now um, the, the fight is on again. And this is kind of what it's like dealing with grass fires. You got, you got a big attack that happens, it starts to look good, but you can't let your guard down until we've got the hot spots out. And it could be a long night trying to get the hot spots out out here, guys. Right, Brandon, I wanna ask you quickly if you can hear me okay, despite all that wind out there, are you seeing any homes nearby? Are there any really busy roads or maybe the roads are gonna be choking off those uh, neighborhoods nearby if, they, if the fire jumps? So we have not, I, I don't have confirmation of it jumping out of this kind of block that contains uh, the Mather Lake. But uh, as I mentioned, we have uh, Douglas on one corner and then Sunrise on the other. And uh, fortunately, as the fire wants to move south from these northerly winds, I don't see a lot of development directly in the path of the fire, but there is a lot of vegetation. So I, I don't wanna say no one is threatened by this. It's way too early to say that. Uh, hopefully, because they've gotten some progress made on, on the flank of the fire where this already burned, I've been noticing there's been a little bit of relocating. In fact, you can see some of these brush trucks right here are making their way towards the head of the fire. So uh, what they'll do is what we were describing earlier in the show, which is they'll come up the flank of the fire and they try to pinch the head of the fire off. So you never want to attack the fire where it's running. You don't want to jump right in front of where the flames are burning. You come up along the side and then you try to pinch the fire off. And that's what they're gonna try to do. The thing is, like I was saying, embers can go right up over where you're doing that pinching. And then you've got a new spot that you gotta go chase. And that's kind of what's happened right here in front of our eyes. Fortunately, it hasn't gone far enough that it's in a neighborhood or actively threatening, uh, you know, right on somebody's doorstep right now. But it's way too early to let our guard down because there's a lot of dry stuff that this uh, that is in the way of this fire so if it wants to keep moving that direction it could keep burning for quite some time and that's why it's important that they try to uh, get those hot spots tamped down because if the wind is going to be like this for hours more uh, any spark can do it can get this thing back up and running again guys yeah a developing situation and plenty of fuel and a few more hours left of that wind advisory that's red right flag warning we do have a red flag warning in place throughout the evening until tomorrow our brandon Ritterman live for us we thank you brandon Yes, and remember to stay with us on air and online. We can continue to follow these red flag warnings and the red and the weather information across our region. Be sure to download our free ABC 10 app to stay in the know about what's happening in your area. We're also following the Arrow Fire in Calaveras County. That is now up to 1,000 acres. Dozens of people are under evacuation order. We have a crew headed to that fire as well. So we are stationed all across the region, tracking the fire danger throughout the evening, working to keep you safe. Stay with us for updates on air and online for the very latest.